Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. James Gill and you've joined me for another clinical skills session. Currently we are 24 weeks pregnant and we thought it would be appropriate time to do a clinical skills video on how to use the fetal Doppler probe. Now it's very important that we highlight that this is a clinical skills video. So for medical students, midwives, people who are learning how to use these, this is not something that we would recommend that people do at home. Now, the reason why I highlight that, and I'll put a link to uh, the study I'm talking about in a moment, the BMJ highlighted why people without a medical skill should not be using these at home because they can lead to false reassurance. There's certainly been cases where people have been concerned about the lack of movement of the baby and have used a fetal uh, probe but have heard their own pulse and have been falsely reassured when actually the fetus was in distress and has subsequently died. So even though you can buy these off Amazon, don't buy these unless you are a medical health professional and are trained to use it. So hopefully with that um, health warning in place, we can show you correctly how to do this. So we need to make sure that the patient is um, fit and well at the moment. So we want to make sure they've not got any issues with their stomach and that they've not had any problems with urinary tract infections. Basically, we're going to be poking and prodding. We want to make sure there's no problems. So the big question would be, rather than your boss told you to, why should we be able to use a fetal Doppler probe? Well, there's several key reasons for that. First off, and this is probably the most common reason why mums will ask for it to be done, is to assess fetal well-being. From our point of view, we're going to take that one step further and say to also assess viability. So from 14 weeks approximately, we should be able to detect a fetal heartbeat. In reality, we don't go testing until 16 weeks because we might not be able to identify it at 14 weeks. And obviously that can cause significant maternal distress if we're saying it's probably fine and it's probably us that's screwing up. Whereas if we can say at 16 weeks, we're very confident we should be able to find the fetal heartbeat and we do, everybody's happy. In terms of checking on fetal well-being, the fetal Doppler will give us an idea of how uh, the baby is reacting to the maternal environment. So for example, if the mother is stressed, if they are anemic, and let's be fair, most pregnant women will end up with a degree of dilutional anemia. If the mother is suffering from um, hypotension um, or perhaps has an infection herself, we'd likely see that in the fetal heart rate that we're taking. In the vast majority of cases, we'd find that fetal heart rate was similarly elevated because the baby is also stressed. However, we may find that the baby has been so stressed that we've now gone th all the way through and they've essentially used up their reserves and now we have a fetal bradycardia where the baby's pulse is low. That's very important for us and we consider that a negative sign of fetal well-being. So we definitely want to discuss with uh, the specialists at that point. So when the actual baby's on the way and the lady's heading into labor, uh, a lot of the time people just think about the monitoring that stays on the, the, the abdomen permanently. However, we can still use the fetal uh, Doppler throughout the stages of labor. Um, and it's again, vitally important that we are able to assess the fetus at that point to look for signs of decelerations. So the heart rate slowing, which again might indicate fetal distress and that we might need to be paying more attention to that mother, maybe getting a little bit more interventional. The other reason that we want to be using a fetal probe is we can pick up things early on. So for example, we might pick up ectopic beats of the um, fetus's heart. We may hear some abnormal flows that may indicate things like an enlarged uh, atrial septal defect or enlarged ventral septal defect. Similarly, we might also pick up very rare conditions uh, like tetralogy of Fallot, where the blood flow around the heart is disrupted because the heart hasn't fully formed properly. And as mentioned, at any point, we may pick up those bradycardias, which might tell us we need to look more. But in the vast majority of cases, and the commonest reason you're going to be doing a uh, fetal Doppler on uh, a pregnant mum, 
it's just for reassurance. And it is wonderful when you're in clinic and you do the Doppler and you get to see the mum hear the heart rate for the first time. And you know, it's, it's a big moment. And even throughout the pregnancy, every time they get to hear their baby's heart rate, you know, it brings a smile. And again, to link back to what I've said at the beginning, although that sounds like a wonderful thing to have at home, it is not, and I would stress, if you are a layperson, if you are not medically trained to use a fetal Doppler, do not go buying these online. They can actually put your infant at risk because you may be falsely reassured when there's something going wrong that you should actually be talking to your healthcare professional. Please do not buy these. So when we're using the ultrasound probe on uh, the abdomen, it's important that we don't just go, hey, look, I found it, and then move forward. We need to make sure we're listening for at least 60 seconds to confirm that the fetal heart rate is at the level that we think it is, that there's no decelerations, and there's no obvious ectopics. Similarly, we'll want to do the same over the maternal um, pulse once we find that, just to make sure there's no uh, evidence of abnormalities with regard to the flow to the placenta there. Although in this particular situation, this is more for the pulse rather than anything more specific. If we wanted to get more detail on the placental blood flow, then we'd actually go to a, a, a much larger uh, probe where we could actually visualize uh, the flow through the Doppler probe, which uh, here we are only just listening to it instead. Now, whilst I love my technology, and these are great for the mum being able to hear the, um, uh, the fetal heart sounds, sometimes these aren't available. And you'll find a lot of midwives who will still use a pinard, essentially a tube that they will place over the abdomen in order for them to directly listen to the fetal heartbeat. In my opinion, all doctors should be able to use basic medical equipment. So even if you intend to be an orthopedic surgeon, I think you should still be able to use an otoscope because you never know what you're going to encounter on the wards or potentially when you're dealing with a fracture in the A&E department. That patient might also ask for you to look in your ear. You may be a specialist, but you're also a doctor. For that reason, I would argue that all doctors should be able to use a Doppler probe because you're going to use it on any pregnant lady, whether you see, uh, see them in the GP surgery, whether you see them in the A&E department, whether you're seeing them on the ward for a different tissue. If they have access to them and the mum likes that reassurance, these are a very, very useful tool at buying you that reassurance. So I don't think this is a specialist tool. I think this is a medical tool that all medical students all doctors should be able to use properly and correctly. So with that in mind, let's get on with the examination. So obviously we want to gel our hands and introduce ourselves to the patient. Hello, my name is Dr. Gill. Um, I've been asked to do, um, have a uh, look at um, your baby today and do the fetal heartbeat. Uh, before we go any further, could we please confirm your name and date of birth? Yes, I'm Dr. Bethany Gill and my date of birth is the 15th of August, 1991. Super. So uh, before we go uh, any further, uh, have you noticed any problems uh, with uh, the bump at the moment? No. Super. And have you felt the little one move today? Yes. Super. And so far, have there been any problems with the pregnancy for you? A bit of sickness early in pregnancy, but seems to have settled now. Okay. So if we can get you to lie back, if you're comfortable, uh, then we'll have a look at what we can find. So. It's important that we keep the patient comfortable, so we're actually putting the bed at 15 degrees. As we get more advanced in the pregnancy and we get an increased size of, well, everything, um, then we want to have uh, the patient in the left lateral position so that the fetus and the uterus, etc., don't press down on the vena cava, which could cause uh, issues with blood supply to the mum. Okay, so with that in mind, if we can have a look at the bump, if that's okay. And if we can just bring things down for you a little bit, thank you. So in terms of approaching the bump, what we need to do first off is actually find how far up the fundus, how far up the uterus can be felt. I'm going to come over with both hands, starting at the bottom, and I'm just going to slowly flex my fingers up until I run out of, essentially, um, density, and I'm finding I'm dropping off. And that there is telling me that I have found the edge of the fundus or the uterus. Um, at this point, it's at the umbilicus, which is not surprising because that's where we'd expect it for 24 weeks gestation. The next thing we need to do is find out 
where the baby's actually sitting. Is it sitting in a transverse line, so lengthways stretching out across all the insides, or is it top to bottom, which is hopefully where we'll be looking at it? And similarly, is it head down or head up? The reason for all of this is I want to find the shoulder and I'm going to use the probe directed toward the shoulder, which will hopefully give us the greatest chance of picking up the sounds we're going to be listening for. So in terms of what we're listening for, we're going to be listening for two main noises. We're going to be listening for uh, the maternal flow through the placenta, which should be at uh, their heart rate. So I'm going to check that before I actually put hands on the patient. And then I'm going to be listening for the gallop rhythm of the fetal heart, which will be somewhere around 110 to 165. So hopefully considerably higher than the mother. So I'm just going to take the pulse to start off with. So we've got a pulse of about 70 there. So I know I'm now going to be able to distinguish both the maternal and the fetal pulse. So I'm going to feel up for the uh, fundal height. So using both hands, I'm just flexing the, uh, the fingertips up until we get to the end of the density. So here, just at the umbilicus, and I can go all the way over it so I know where I've got the uterus. Then I'm going to feel with both hands on the uh, left of the patient initially, and then on the right of the patient. So that's trying to establish the lie. And here we've definitely got a longitudinal lie. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to feel, essentially, can I feel knobbly bits uh, with one hand versus smooth bits on the other, which is telling me that we've got the arms and legs and things on uh, one side versus the back on the other. So we think that we've got um, a, uh, a baby head down. We're going to double check that by changing my position. So I'm now pressing from the bottom and then steadily moving up. And I can't be certain, but I think I've got more density towards the bottom and less density towards the top. So I think we may have feelings of the uh, head down here and a bottom up here, in which case I'm going to be listening around about here-ish, hoping that I'm listening through the shoulder into the, um, uh, uh, into the womb. So before we actually start getting the gel and the probe out, we're going to get a little bit of paper and we're going to give the patient that to ask them to tuck into the top of their um, uh, trousers or underwear because well, we don't want to get things all messed for, for, for the patient. While the patient is doing that, I'm going to get the ultrasound. Okay, so we're going to leave it to probe off for the moment. Then we're going to apply the jelly to the top. Okay, so more rather than less is always better. Then detach the probe head, which is going to be vitally important, and then we'll switch things on. We can check our battery life and also our volume. So for ourselves, we're going to increase the volume up. So the jelly is your friend, so more of it will help sound transmit through. So, again, as I said, from, from what I felt uh, on the abdomen to start off with, I'm expecting to find something towards uh, the right side. So let's have a listen. Again, plenty of jelly on there, and I'll turn the volume up for yourselves. And we're suspecting that we're going to find the um, shoulder down here. So this is where we're going to kick off with. So right away we found the fetal heartbeat, sitting there at a nice 150. Then we need to move around to find the maternal pulse. So there's the maternal flow, and it's coming up there about 77 beats per minute. And we'll move back around. And there we go, straight into the baby. So we can hear that gallop. So that's a really good rhythm, and we can see the significant difference 
and rate between the two. Don't forget, they're going to be moving around inside as well whilst this is happening. So it's not just about the operator. They can just object and decide to go for a quick uh, wiggle inside. So we let the uh, mum uh, wipe off the jelly. And then we'll put that all in the bin. And obviously make sure that mum covers themselves up. So we also want to make sure we're wiping off the probe at the same time. So, any questions with myself with that? Yes. So were you happy that you could hear both uh, yourself, your own heart rate, and that of the baby? Yes. Super. Do you have any other questions for me at the moment? Super. Well, thank you very much for your time. So, in terms of using the probe, the best way to look at it is actually as a torch. So you're shining the light around, and we're trying to shine it onto the baby. If we Heck, we'll use the ultrasound uh, device as the main thing. If I'm shining it away, I'm literally not going to hear anything back from it. So I need to try and position it to where I think I'm going to have found the baby. And I go back to what I was saying, that I'm listening through the shoulder. So I think, here's the shoulder, the heart's going to be here. So I'm positioning in that uh, direction, trying to shine the ultrasound waves in that direction. And once you can grasp using this as a torch, trying to illuminate what's inside, it's certainly much easier for you to perform these procedures. Um, I hope that's been a, a useful overview for yourselves on how to use the Doppler uh, probe. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a few more uh, videos like this, if I can get <laughs> permission to use this uh, um, to use this demonstration. Um, if there's any questions, please put them down below. And uh, yeah, thank you for putting up with this and thank you all for joining us. The best part of it is, although I'm clinical skills, she's actually obs and gynae, so it really should be Beth doing the examination on me. But uh, well, I lack certain organs for this. <laughs> right, take care and we'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.